Good morning from the Gothenburg Learning Center. My name is Sean McDonald, Technical Field Associate here at the Learning Center. So today I want to do a little bit of a short video as well as showcase uh, some of our new additions to the Learning Center. So if you can't tell out there, we would have about 200 head of cows uh, that to grace some of our stover. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity today anyways to talk about uh, some of the things we need to think about before we graze cattle. So a, qu a good question you might ask first of all is, well, why are we grazing uh, our stocks? So stocks are great, uh, cheap uh, energy source for a lot of our pregnant mothers, especially with the way grain prices are today. We need all the help we can. So before we even think about grazing, uh, we need to be scouting around our fields. So if say a particular year we have a bad harvest, there's a lot of dropped ears, a lot of dropped kernels. Uh, we need to be thinking about or maybe possibly removing that. So when we graze cattle, we don't want a whole lot of grain out there. Uh, we can get a lot of digestive issues. So if we have more than 10 bushels per acre, we need to think about maybe removing that or being maybe a little more uh, aggressive about how we graze our, our fields. Another thing we need to think about is just for how long some of our cattle can graze out there. So a good rule of thumb I've learned always is for, say, you have about 100 bushels per acre of residue out there. Uh, take times about 3.5, uh, which is assuming about a 1,200 pound animal, and that will give you about an uh, average number of days you can graze that field. So in the case of that one, about 50 days or so. So one of the concerns, especially when it comes to grazing, I hear a lot, is they're always worried about compaction. Now that can be true, um, especially around places like waters, where you have cattle accumulate, a lot of cattle accumulate, a lot of stomping on the ground. We can see a little bit of compactions in those areas. But if we look at university studies, a lot of times we're only seeing compaction maybe in those top few inches of soil. So a little bit of light tillage maybe later on can help mitigate a lot of those issues. But as compared to a lot of, a lot of our other field activities, whether it be tractors, combines, those can really add, those are significantly, add significant more compaction, especially lower in that soil profile. So cattle aren't necessarily something I'm particularly worried about when it comes to compaction. So another way we can mitigate our uh, potential issues with compaction is not to graze uh, when it's particularly wet. So this year, whether it be fortunate or unfortunate, we haven't had a whole lot of moisture, uh, especially this winter. So it's not a challenge we've particularly had around here, uh, especially with being as cold as it is, that ground's nice and hard. So we're not getting, um, we shouldn't see the compactions we would, especially if it's a more of a wet year. But as it starts to warm up here, maybe we'll get a little bit of moisture. Um, I do get a little more concerned with that compaction issue. So that's a big thing we need to think about is not to graze, especially when it's wet conditions. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us here at the Learning Center. Um, and be sure to catch us next week for uh, another one of our videos. Thanks. Thanks for watching this video from the Gothenburg Water Utilization Learning Center. For more information, please call 308-537-4500.